Hi, I'm Penny Simkin, and I'm going to talk to you about one of my favorite topics here, the essence of coping with labor. And uh, I've actually, I have to tell you how I learned this. I didn't learn it by reading books. I didn't learn it from other experts. I learned it from laboring women. Uh, I've been a doula for many years, and I've been present throughout labors for hundreds of women. And I kind of learned that what I taught them <laughs> wasn't always what they wound up doing in labor. And I want to show you what they showed me. And I call it the three R's. You know, my New England accent makes it a little awkward, but the letter R, standing for relaxation, rhythm, and ritual. And I have found that when women are coping well with labor, they show those three R's, relaxation, rhythm, and ritual. So relaxation, what do I mean by that? I don't mean that the woman is lying there with a grin on her face, uh, uh, totally relaxed and uh, thrilled with the labor. I mean that she is relaxing when the contractions are over. Uh, when, it's, when it's done, she can take a sigh of relief and she can kind of let herself go for a few moments until the next one. She doesn't, to, to my way of thinking, it is not necessary or an indication that she's coping well only if she is relaxing during contractions. Many women find that movement and moaning and other things are helpful. So the relaxation between contractions. The second one is rhythm. And the rhythm means that she's doing something rhythmic throughout her contractions. And women tend to find something to do and they tend to repeat it. I'll talk about that, the ritual part of it, in a moment. But when I say rhythm, I'm talking about breathing in rhythm, moaning in rhythm, moving in rhythm, stroking herself in rhythm, swaying in rhythm, rocking, maybe swaying with her partner, swaying on the birth ball, but she's moving or breathing in rhythm. Also, thought processes are rhythmic. And one woman, uh, I checked in with her between contractions and I asked her, what was going through your mind during that contraction? Because she'd been absolutely silent. And she said, I was saying to myself, be still like the mountain and flow like the river. Be still like the mountain and flow like the river. So she had, was showing no ex, uh, exterior rhythm, but she had it inside. I'll tell you another woman too, it's gonna take a moment, but she was very overdue, made a batch of fudge one day, and was determined to eat it all. You may remember, if you've ever made fudge, you have to stir it or it burns. Well, the phone rang, she stopped stirring, it burned, boiled over, she had an awful mess to clean up. Next day she goes into labor. She found herself in labor, stroking her belly and saying to herself, keep stirring and you won't boil over. Keep stirring and you won't boil over. So she had this rhythmic mantra going in her head that she had not planned and rhythmic movements. So, uh, if, and my advice is, if she, and partners, especially to you and other care providers, if a woman has rhythm in what she's doing, she is coping. And she may make, make weird sounds or do things that seem strange. But if there's rhythm to it, tell yourself, calm down, she's doing fine, she's got rhythm. The third element here is ritual. And ritual is the repetition of the same ritual, uh, rhythmic activity, contraction after contraction. So people tend to find a groove, find a way to get through it, and that becomes almost instinctive. And then they repeat it, contraction after contraction. And I love that when I see that. And it tells me this woman is kind of in a zone. It tells me that she is fully aware of what's going on, but she's allowing instinctive uh, sounds and movements to come from herself. And she's in a very good place to labor. So the three R's, uh, keep those in mind. Uh, they apply to any method of childbirth that you learn. Um, but uh, that's the acid test. If, there, if she's showing us relaxation, rhythm, and ritual, she's coping, and we don't try to correct her. Thank you very much.